Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 12, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In Part 2, we're going to actually implement the self-organizing map that we learned about in Part 1. The self-organizing map is made up of three classes. The first class is used to normalize the input. We learned about how to normalize input in the previous class part. We learned that there were two types of normalization. Both of these normalization types will be implemented in this class. The next class is the actual self-organizing map itself. This class is the main class that you will interact with when you are actually using the self-organizing map. The third class is the training class. It is used to actually train the neural network so that it can recognize the patterns that we are providing it with. We will begin by looking at how normalization is implemented. We will now review the implementation of the self-organizing map. In this section, we are going to go over how the normalization works as well as look at the general structure of the entire self-organizing map implementation. The next two parts will go over the process of how the self-organizing map actually produces output as well as how the self-organizing map is actually trained. There are three main classes that make up the self-organizing map. These three classes will be used by other example programs in this course to make use of the self-organizing map. These implement the self-organizing map at a low level. The normalize input class is used to normalize the inputs according to either the z-axis or multiplicative methods of input normalization. The self-organizing map is kind of the main class that encompasses the self-organizing map and also calculates the output given the specified input. The train self-organizing map is a class that is used to actually perform the training on the self-organizing map. We're now going to look at how the normalize input class works and in later parts of this class session we're going to see how the self-organizing map and train self-organizing map classes also work. We begin by examining normalize input. The calculate factors method is the main entry point for the normalization class. This method is going to be used to actually normalize the input. You can see that it takes a double array which is the input items that you would like normalized. It then creates an input matrix. An input matrix is essentially just a column matrix based on the input values that have been specified. We're going to get the vector length of the input matrix and we are going to make sure that the input length has not grown too small. We have a predefined very small variable that we will use. We establish this as a floor and do not allow the vector length to go below that. We also determine the number of inputs which will be used later in a later slide and we check to see if this is multiplicative input or not. If this is multiplicative input normalization then we're going to create a normalization factor that is essentially the reciprocal of the length, 1.0 over the length, and we are going to set the synthetic input to zero because multiplicative input does not use a synthetic input. Synthetic input, as you will recall from earlier in this part, is only used by the z-axis normalization. The program then continues. If this is not multiplicative normalization, then it must be z-axis normalization because these are the only two types of normalization we're evaluating in this course. The else statement that you see here will be executed if this is indeed z-axis normalization. We calculate the normal factor by taking the reciprocal of the square root of the number of inputs. This normalization factor is going to be multiplied against all of the inputs to properly normalize them. We're then going to calculate the number of inputs minus the length to minus the length squared, which is um, the second power of length. If this value is greater than zero, then we calculate the synthetic input to be the square root times the normal factorization of, of d. 
if the value is, le is greater than zero, this is what it is. If the value is less than zero or equal to zero, then the value is the synthetic input is not going to be used. We simply set the synthetic input to zero, which causes it to evaluate to nothing and it won't be added as part of the regular input. This one method that we just examined handles both the multiplicative and the z-axis normalization used by the self-organizing map. This concludes part two. In this part, you learned how we were going to implement the self-organizing map and specifically how we implemented the normalization of the self-organizing map. In part three, you are going to learn how we implement the actual self-organizing map itself, followed by part four where you will learn how we train or how we implement the training for the self-organizing map. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.